Odysseus, the epic myth of the hero, book 10. Hector dead, Achilles dead, and Ajax dead. The army lost its heart to fight, no end in sight, and many clamored that we launch our slashing ships and set our sails for home. Now Calchas, seer of doom, arose and claimed the god revealed that Troy would never fall until the bow of Hercules were fetched. This famous heirloom rested in the hands of Philoctetes, hero who had lit the funeral pyre of godlike Hercules. He sailed with us to Troy, but on the isle of Lesbos suffered snakebite on his foot. The wound refused to heal, and Agamemnon ordered Philoctetes left behind. He did not die, but neither did he heal. His wound had festered all the woeful war. I sailed for Lesboth with Machaon, master of the art of Kentar healing, and by the word of mighty Agamemnon, high king of Achaeans, desperate to keep his troops intact and finish what he'd come to do by war. Philoctetes greeted us from where he lay in bed. What brings you here to see the man you left so long ago for dead? Has high-walled Troy been sacked and all of Priam's fifty sons been killed? And now do all your slashing ships race homeward on the wind with Trojan treasure in your holds? Or are you stymied still in weary stalemate, killing, being killed, and victory a hopeless dream? You do not bear the joyful look of victors, nor of men with happy prospects in their heart at seeing loved ones soon and bedding wives so long ago forsaken for the war of Agamemnon, glutton king. You run some errand for him coming here. You need some word or thing from Philoctetes. Being stuck in bed, I cannot fight. I have no powers of prophecy, nor special gifts for strategy. This can only mean you want the bow of Hercules. Some god has whispered in the ear of Calchas, or some other prophet, that you need his bow to break the walls of Troy. This must be it. For another's blasphemy I suffer here, Agamemnon's evil slight of homage to Apollo, for our victory at Lesbos enraged the archer making snakes appear from rocks. The one that bit my heel was meant for Agamemnon, king that feeds upon his friends. I never will release the bow of Hercules to him that left me here to die this castaway, long death. So will you kill me for it then, Odysseus, you henchman for the dog we made our king? This said, he reached and grabbed the bow and notched an arrow to the string and drew it back. He aimed at me and smiled as would a wolf about to sink its teeth into a lamb's soft throat. I spoke plain words to soothe his bitter heart. Philoctetes, kill me if you must, but none will praise the deed. You're shrewd to guess the purpose of our embassy. You're right to say that Agamemnon uses friends to work his will. He knows the price of victory is blood. A squeamish general loses lives to no advantage but to stroke his tender heart. He calls up greater numbers from back home and soon the war enlarges, more on all sides getting ki killed. True soldiers know they're doomed unless their luck holds out. It's better far to push the troops you have to fight the war and make the sacrifice when called upon. Such a sacrifice was yours. The mission first, and then the men, and those too sick to fight are left behind. Under care if possible, or not, if fate unveils a chance to strike a telling blow, and there's no time to stop. Exploit the op opening, then tend the hurt and dead. I speak to you as king to king. I say to you, with all the love I bear in heart for you, that were Odysseus, high king of staunch Achaeans, I too would leave you on the beach and press attack to hasten victory, and you yourself would do the same. So let us not sit here and bandy idle words. You suffered then a soldier's luck. But now we've come to heal you if we can and put you in the forefront of the battle. Trojans by the thousands still need killing. 
help your country and your friends. McCann, healer of the many types of wounds that come from spear and sword and axe and dart, is here to cure your festering wound and stand you on your feet again. You'll fight once more, pent-up Philoctetes, leading all the brave Achaeans sacking windswept gold-rich Troy. This said, he nodded his assent and dropped the bow of Hercules. McCann went to work. He took an ancient spearhead made of bronze and scraped some green and flaky rust into the wound and laid a poultice of simples upon it to draw the stubborn venom out. He ordered that a hecatomb of fifty bulls be offered to the archer, bright Apollo. He spread a circle of barley on Mother Earth and marked the sacrificial ground. The victims' heads were tilted back, throats exposed to slashing bronze. Blood soaked the green, and flies arrived in sticky swarms, droning to the bleats of dying cattle. Young and old sang hymns to gods who work from far away. Most dearly, sudden, bright Apollo, Leto's son, musician, oracle, bringer of disease. As butchered skin the spiral horned cattle and carved the portions up for open fire roasting, special cuts were wrapped in double folds of fat and wine was sprinkled over. All stood round with forks to spit their fair and generous portion and take it to the fire to talk and sing and drink the wine of Thrace in fragrant smoke that pleased immortal gods with friends till Hesperus departed, leaving in his wake a sky the color of a strong warm light shining through a tender baby's hand. Philoctet is bettered in the time it takes the moon to wax and wane. We sailed for Troy and in his very first encounter killed that thief of love, sly Paris, with an arrow to the groin. Even Trojans cheered his writhing, rock-biting death. <laughs>